G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Well, uh, the NBA decided that it uh, was just going to be crazy today. We've got an enormous trade with Kevin Durant being moved to the Phoenix Suns, as well as a lot of other deals to discuss. Let's go. Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. Not a game. We talking about practice. LeBron James with no regard for human life. And he's going to go. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Curry for three. Wow. Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North. Or now we the champions. Not the destination. G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. So, uh, wasn't planning on doing a podcast today, but yet here we are. Uh, we're sort of gearing up for the trade deadline tomorrow, but you know, NBA be doing NBA craziness. So, uh, literally uh, five minutes ago, the news of Kevin Durant being traded to the Phoenix Suns was passed down, as well as a lot of other trades that have happened a day earlier than normal. So uh, we're going to do a, a show today, more than likely going to be doing a show tomorrow as well with uh, what I expect to be some more trades to go down. But again, literally happened five minutes ago. So my thoughts, I am still collecting them. So again, allow me the opportunity to sort of think things through initially, but we're going to be breaking down the four major trades that have happened today. So starting with the big one, uh, Kevin Durant has been traded to the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns are sending back, uh, as I literally just look at the uh, the, the trades right now, uh, they are sending back Mikhail uh, Bridges, uh, Cam Johnson, and four unprotected first round picks in 2023, 2025, 2027, and 2029. Um, they're also sending Jay Crowder as well, a 2028 pick swap. Um, TJ, Mc- TJ Warren is also going across in the deal over to Phoenix with Kevin Durant. So it is a huge, huge deal. Obviously, Kevin Durant, one of the best players in the NBA. So a lot of things are going to change for fantasy basketball. Um, in terms of my initial reactions, I think that this obviously signifies a change of direction. And I did flag this on Twitter when I was sort of saying that I thought that Cam Thomas was going to be a sell high because there was no way he's going to keep this up. The little flag I said was if they do trade Kevin Durant and it is for a rebuilding type uh, package, then potentially Cam Thomas could be, uh, you know, he might be able to, to do something and continue. Obviously not scoring 40 points every bloody night, but he could be a fantasy option. So I think first and foremost, um, apologies if you listened to my advice and you did sell him high. Um, hopefully you managed to sell him high for a top 75, top 80, which is what I was sort of saying. But at the moment, I would now say do not trade Cam Thomas until we get more news and more trades, which I expect will be coming. He could potentially be the biggest winner from this fantasy, uh, from the trade deadline in terms of fantasy. I still have my reservations about a Cam Thomas and the lack of uh, production elsewhere outside of scoring threes and a free throw percentage. However, when you lose Kyrie Irving, when you lose Kevin Durant, uh, and off the back of you putting up three 40-point games, um, I can't sort of then go ahead, bury my head in the sand, and uh, keep sort of saying the same thing because obviously things are changing, things are moving around him. So I think that Cam Thomas... Uh, is absolutely a must-add, run to the waiver wire, pick up, and we just wait and see what happens. There is still, obviously, so much water to go under the bridge here. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, uh, who, who we say, Cam Johnson, Mikael Bridges, Jay Crowder, Dorian Finney-Smith, are all coming. There's five players coming into this team, two players or three players, if you include Teddy Warren, leaving this team. So more players coming in that are going out. I still think that at the time of recording, there are more moves to be made. They have like a million forwards on their roster at the moment. Um, so, and if they're getting all these picks in, it does signal to me that they are going in a more rebuilding type scenario. So 
all of this stuff is going to change rapidly. But the first and foremost thing I want to say is that Cam Thomas, go at him right now. If you have him, stop asking for trades, cancel all the trades that you have, um, and just wait it out because there's a lot that's going to be happening here. So first and foremost, I think Cam Thomas, you hold on to him and you make sure that you don't do any moves from now until after the trade deadline when things become more clear. Um, in terms of the rest of the guys coming over to Brooklyn, look, it's a mess right now. Like who, again, I think there's going to be more trades, but they've got, um, they've got Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, Dorian Finney, Smith, um, uh, who else am I forgetting? Royce O'Neal. Like, there's five guys that play, like, the same position. Uh, ben Simmons is in there as well. Then you've got players like Claxton, Cam Thomas, Seth Curry, Joe Harris. Like, this roster is a complete mess. There are, I guarantee you. In fact, I'll throw one of these in here. Let's go. Oh, wrong button. Yeah. <laughs> this one. I guarantee you that there are going to be more moves. Like, this roster makes zero sense right now. So there's going to be more things that are going to happen. Um, so really hard for me to say who's going to be the bigger, biggest winner out of this group right now. I will say that a lot of people might be jumping onto the Cam Johnsons and Mikhail Bridges of the world. I think Mikhail Bridges is already a really solid player, but we have seen him when there's stretches without Chris Paul and without Devin Booker that he hasn't really been able to elevate into that number one usage type player. He's obviously obviously really good when it comes to efficiency, his steals and blocks, he hits threes, he low turnover, he's in a very solid player all the way around, but I have my doubts about him really leveling up his like counting stats and being that number one scorer without it severely hurting his efficiency. I don't think he's a kind of guy that can create for himself. He's an excellent, excellent starting level player that fits alongside your stars, but I don't see him as a guy that really is going to elevate in a sort of expanded usage role. So I think that it's early to say that he's going to be sort of the huge winner in this deal and really break out. He's going to be solid, and I kind of expect more of what we saw when we had uh, Devin Booker and Chris Paul out on the Phoenix Suns, which did happen for a, a decent stretch of the year. So um, I think that he's going to be kind of just doing what he d- does. Cam Johnson, I think, is another player that you go and add right now. He might have been floating around on a few waiver wires. He was someone that was decent to start the year. I think he had a chance of being a top 100 guy. Um, um, but, you know, injury obviously held him back when he was out for a long time, came back, hasn't really lit the world on fire. He's had some decent games uh, mixed in there with some poor games. I'm just pulling up his uh, game log now and seeing, I just want to look and see how many uh, Rosses he's on, according to Basketball Monster. Again, apologies for the franticness of this podcast. Really not prepared. I just jumped on here and I'm going to sort of vomit a lot of my thoughts onto the onto the camera at the moment. So, I mean, he, look, he's 90, 99% rostered according to Basketball Monster, but just double-check that your league, that he's not available. Um, he, he was pretty disappointing these last couple of weeks. So, last two weeks, he's 119th. So, still worthwhile having, and I think that there is a potential for that to improve and for him to get a better, roster, uh, better role, uh, assuming that he is not one of the guys that has then moved later on. I think... I'd probably be starting him over like uh, your Dorian Finney-Smiths and you know your, your Royce O'Neals and those sort of types. I think both the boys coming from Phoenix are better than those guys. But again, five players coming in to replace two. There's lots of stuff that has to happen. On the Phoenix Suns side, I think obviously anytime you add Kevin Durant to a roster... Everyone on that roster is going to lose a bit of value. That includes Devin Booker. Probably it hurts Devin Booker the most, in my opinion. Um, I I wonder what this hap- what happens with a player like DeAndre Ayton. Again, not super reliant on uh, heavy scoring, but he's not the center that that gives you a lot of block shots and steals, assists, and and he's you know decent rebounder, but his points also affects his field goal percentage, so I think that he's a bit of a loser as well. Chris Paul obviously will lose a bit of value also just for the nature of, you know, he's all, he's probably not averaging any points right now, but Kevin Durant can handle the ball and, and play make a little bit as well. Um, so I think that all basically the Suns left on the roster lose a bit of value. Probably the biggest hit to Kevin, uh, sorry, to Devin Booker because again, relies a lot on usage and heavy scoring. I still think he probably, he's obviously still going to be good. Um, and I think Kevin Durant going from Brooklyn. Look, he was playing alongside Kyrie for most of the season. So I think moving over, playing next to Devin Booker, I think you're going to get the Kevin Durant that you've gotten all season. I think he's pretty much going to be doing what he does. 
he is the guy that everyone else has to adjust to. He is not adjusting to this team. It's Kevin freaking Durant. So I think he will be fine in terms of that move there. Um, I'm just going to check my Twitter right now, make sure there hasn't been any other updates on this trade that I've uh, been talking about. No, I, I can't see anything else on here. My Twitter is going crazy right now. Um, so I think from that point of view... I think that, yeah, it's just there's not a whole lot of things you can do in terms of ads and drops. You've got Kevin Durant coming in and replacing a Mikhail Bridges. Um, their starting lineup, if I have a think about it right now, again, sorry for the scattered nature of my thoughts right now. Um, the Phoenix Suns, they'd obviously start uh, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and uh, DeAndre Ayton. Who would be their, their fourth starter? Let me just have a think about that. Would it be someone? Uh, again, sorry, guys. Let's, have a, let's go to their depth chart. Um, in any case, I don't think it's going to be someone who's going to come in and light the world on fire. Um, so I think that off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone who presents himself as a must-add for the Phoenix Suns side of things. Um, really it is the Cam Johnson and the, the Cams. We've got to add the Cams. Cam Johnson and Cam Thomas, I think, are probably the must-add players and must-hold-on-to players until we get some more news. Again, like I said uh, several times already, there's going to be a lot of water still under the bridge uh, to go for this team. So who would it be? Uh, maybe it's a Tory Craig, or maybe it is TJ Warren who comes over in the deal as well again. Even if TJ Warren is starting, I don't really think he's going to be a huge guy that's going to get a lot of value. Booker, Paul, Durant, Aiden, they're going to take up a lot of shots. And when you're a player like Warren, you don't give yourself much else outside of scoring. I don't think he's necessarily a guy who's a must-add player. Uh, I'd be prioritizing and saving those ads for tomorrow or or whenever it is you're listening to uh, some more moves. So I wouldn't go ahead and add TJ Warren in the hopes that he becomes a starter on this team, Uh, nor would I do that for a Dario Saric or anyone else of that nature. I think I would just be sort of waiting for more moves the next day. So... Kevin Durant, he's moved over to the Phoenix Suns. We talked about it in the uh, offseason when it was the DeAndre Ayton deal. Surprisingly, DeAndre Ayton is still on this Phoenix Suns roster. I would have thought that a, a move might have included a DeAndre Ayton in this kind of scenario, but... It, it, alas, it's it's sort of um, you know not not happening. I think Brooklyn. The good news here, I think, the fact that Jundra Aiden wasn't included. I think that Nicholas Claxton, of all the players, of all the players, maybe aside from Cam Thomas, all the players on the Brooklyn Nets roster, I think uh, Nicholas Claxton is the safest in terms of his value. Haven't got any really big guys coming over in the deal yet. Uh, again, could still change, but I think from what we've seen of Nicholas Claxton this so far this year, he's young, he's an uh, incredible defender. He could end up being a huge winner with an increased offensive role and an improvement. Uh, so his field goal percentage might mean more. So he, again, might be another big winner. Again, collecting my thoughts here. Uh, so I think of the winners, a lot on the Brooklyn Nets side of things, um, Cam Thomas, uh, Cam Johnson and probably a Nicholas Claxton at this point. Let's uh, let's talk about the other trade. So again, wrapping my thoughts around all this sort of stuff. Uh, the other trade that happened was a Jakob Pertl being traded to the Toronto Raptors. We've talked about Jakob Pertl being traded, you know, basically all season. It's finally happened. I think that of the teams that he could have gone to, the Raptors is a decent start, uh, landing point. I still expect him to be a starter. Very interested to see what they do with players like Gary Trent, Fred Van Vliet and OG Ananobi who are still in trade talks. Right now, obviously you've got six guys that you could potentially be starting on this team. Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent, OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam and Jakob Pertl. My gut tells me that they'll put Gary Trent, if say that the roster stays the way that it is, Gary Trent will come off the bench and they'll start an OG at the two, uh, a Scotty Barnes at the three and a... uh, a Pascal Siakam at the four with um, a Pirtle at the five. They could bring Pirtle off the bench, but I think that they've already shown previously that uh, uh, Gary Trent Jr. is a guy that don't mind bringing off the bench. He is also one of their very few guards. So if you start all the guards there, you, you've got no real room to flex uh, to add flexibility in terms of those first subs. Uh, you could turn into a, a big ball later on, but I think more than likely they're going to start Yucca Pirtle at center. 
I think this kills the value of Precious Achua. Basically, he was kind of the guy getting the benefit while OG Anunoby had been out. I think this kind of kills his value. So he is trading towards a drop. So if you need to make a move to grab someone else and Precious is one of your worst players, cut him. I'm okay with that and swoop on some of these other guys. Again, still a lot of water under the bridge to go with these guys. Again, their roster, it's so big, heavy. Uh, and if they're going to trade Gary Trent and Fred Van Vliet, who knows what's going to come back. Probably some more centers and forwards. I don't know. Um, but I think that Jakob Pertl should be okay for now. Hopefully, you know, he's only been averaging 26 minutes so far this season. He should be able to get that in uh, Toronto. Maybe he could even get more under Nick Nurse and go crazy, and this could really blow him up. Hard to tell with how they're going to ride the, the rotation, but I think he should still be okay. Um, this does maybe hurt a Pascal Siakam a little bit if they're going to play a bit more of a traditional center and less of him at center, but I think he'll be okay. Um, he's good enough in a lot of other areas that he'll be fine. But again, we are still waiting on what they are doing with the guys like Gary Trent, Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananobi, who have been in a lot of rumors. And with the way this team is made up, similar to a Brooklyn Nets, there's not a lot of making sense going on here. It is interesting that they've gone and get, got Jakob Pertl, given up some picks to do so, um, which indicates that they're still trying to get into the playoffs, make the play-in tournament, you know, be competitive. So I guess when they, if they are trading one of those guys, it is like a win-now kind of mindset. So again... There are guys that are going to come back, so I don't necessarily think there's any stashes or anything like that after this move. On the Spurs side of things, I think that Zach Collins is the winner here, and again, he would be a guy that I would go out and add. I'm not 100% certain that he's going to blow the you know, the world away with his um, stats. They did bring in Ken Birch. I don't really think he's going to play much for this team. In fact, I don't know if he'll play at all. But So I think Zach Collins is the winner. Charles Bassey is a flyer in a deep league. Um, you could try it. I don't think I'd bother just yet in a in a 14 or a 12 team league, but in a 16 or deeper, I think that Bassey could be a flyer. Uh, but this team is going to be really bad and experiment a lot down the stretch of the season. So Bassey could be one of those uh, junk time, you know, uh, crazy sort of part of the NBA uh, winners here. Zach Collins, I think, is. From you know now until you know after the All Star break, it's going to be the guy that gets the, the the crack at it, and he can put up decent stats. I just don't know if I see the really high upside, and I do expect a lot of um, ups and downs when it comes to this San Antonio roster. And you know who knows? I think they might be done after this. They don't have a lot of other really valuable pieces to move as of yet, so. This might be sort of how it settles out. Jeremy Sohan is going to be given the keys absolutely to this team. Keldon Johnson is going to keep hoisting up every shot under the sun, but that's kind of not really much of a change. So for me, a whole not, a, not a whole lot different, but Zach Collins, I would go and add and just sort of see how it goes. Um, I'd probably be prioritizing, you know, maybe a Cam Johnson uh, and a, um, a Cam Thomas over him, but Zach Collins would probably come in third there. And then I, I did tweet out about this, so we'll go through it and maybe a little bit briefer. The three-team trade that happened earlier today. So uh, we find that, again, what was the trade that happened? I'll, I'll read out my thoughts here, and that'll, that'll get me in the right frame of mind. Um, what do we say here? So I think... Da, 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 da. So yeah, I think the, the biggest ad here is a Colin Sexton. If it was, okay, if I'm prioritizing the ads again here, it probably would be Cam Thomas. It might then be a Cam Johnson, uh, Colin Sexton, and then a Zach Collins. Lots of Collins and Cams in, in the ads today. So I think, again, a lot of them do different things. So I think Sexton, uh, Johnson, and Thomas, sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, Sexton, Far out, too many Thomases and tam- Cams. Uh, Cam Johnson, Colin Sexton, and Zach Collins are all very close to me. So it depends, I guess, what you need. I think that uh, Cam Johnson is probably just a more efficient version of a Colin Sexton. If you want maybe just that pure point scoring ability, um, you don't really care about low rebounds, uh, poor efficiency, uh, low steals and blocks and all those sort of things, then Sexton will probably get a decent 
go at the usage. So he's going to win out there. Zach Collins is going to give you those boards, uh, blocks, uh, decent enough. He's not going to hurt you from the free throw line or the field. He might give you a, a trickle of threes here and there, decent enough rebound. So he's kind of a nice sort of big man build that won't hurt you anywhere. And then um, obviously uh, Cam Thomas might be that upside play. And, and if he gets all the usage in the world like he has the last three games, huge input um, in terms of points, threes, and free throw percentage with a little bit of assists here and there if they've taken all the playmakers off this team. So um, in terms of the other guys we touched on, I think losing D'Angelo Russell helps a player like Anthony Edwards. He's probably going to take more of that playmaking opportunity. Um, I did think about um, someone like uh, uh, Noel. I think that uh, he is someone who could potentially see a bump in points, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to make him 12-team relevant, but he is someone that maybe in deeper leagues you have a crack at and see how it goes. I also see some maybe minor benefits to someone like a Jaden McDaniels and a Kyle Anthony Towns when he does return, just by the nature of the usage of a Jenjo Russell leaving. We know that McDaniels always suffered. He's, you know, one steal, one block, one three kind of a guy, never really got the usage, so he could really take a little bit of it, even if it's just a touch, and just, again, make himself more of a must-add, must-roster player. Um, on the other side of things, when you get someone like um, who's coming over. So DeAndre Russell comes over to the Lakers. Anytime you add a playmaker onto a team with LeBron, I think it's probably a net loss. He is the guy that dominates the ball there. So DeAndre Russell, I expect to see his assist now drop a little bit on this team. The scoring and threes might be able to maintain because they do need his scoring and floor spacing ability. But I think it's those assists that really does drop his value. Um, and I think that Vanderbilt coming over, I'm not sure whether or not he's going to start or Rui Hachimura is going to start. I think Rui might be the better floor spacer. And again, I say that not with a lot of confidence, but he might fit a little bit better next to Anthony Davis and LeBron James. So I'm leaning that way at the moment, but it wouldn't shock me if Vanderbilt starts. Either way, I kind of see both of them playing like a mid to low 20s in minutes, which is kind of what... They were doing anyway, so I don't see a huge change in their value. If you strike out on all the other options, Vanderbilt, and he's there, you could have a crack and see what you get. But again, he's going to continue to kind of do what he's been doing all season. Field goal percentage, rebounds, and steals. I don't know if it's super exciting. And um, yeah, I don't really see too much evidence for that to be a huge breakout there. Uh, More on the, the Lakers side, I think that... You're going to see a drop in Ruri's production. His minutes are going to go down. He wasn't really my favorite fantasy player anyway, but really needs the minutes and usage. The uh, Vanderbilt addition hurts his minutes. Uh, Thomas Bryant obviously going down now as well because now you've got a bunch of different options you could run a center. He is easily a drop uh, if you didn't already. Um, The other uh, team, obviously, with Mike Conley moving over to the Timberwolves. Very curious trade, in my opinion. Don't really know what the Timberwolves want with uh, Mike Conley instead of D'Angelo Russell. I think they've got a couple of second round picks out of it, but interesting deal. I think he's kind of going to do more of the same. It's not a bad actually outcome for his value because he's still likely going to be the starter there, um, you know, playing you know, kind of that floor general role, nothing very exciting. So he's, I think, going to continue kind of to be a back-end sort of a player with decent enough assists. So I think that that's fine there. Um, and Russell Westbrook obviously being traded to the Utah Jazz. Um, I initially thought, I wonder if the Jazz are going to play him much. And now I, I think that he's, the reports are coming out that he's probably going to be bought out. There are some reports to say that Chicago Bulls might be interested in acquiring him in free agency if he is bought out. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm getting a lot of pushback about people saying that I'm a Russell Westbrook hater. Look, I don't enjoy the style of play that he he has. And for fantasy, it's very difficult to build a team around him or or cater for his weaknesses. So... Look, maybe I am a hater. I I try to just do the best I can in communicating my thoughts to you, but I think that there's a very real possibility that Russell Westbrook is potentially out of the league or potentially just someone that we see as a backup or a guy that... I don't know. I, I really don't know how to view Russell Westbrook. I think... There's not enough upside for me to hear if he is on your waiver wire to go and grab him. He's sort of the bottom of the pile in terms of those ads. If you have him already on your roster, maybe you just wait and see. And if there is a a swing over to Chicago and they're delusional about trying to push into the playoffs and they want to give him minutes and give him usage and he junks his way to decent stats in terms of points, rebounds, assists, 
you know, and you're punting free throws and turnovers or you're punting both percentages or whatever like that, that's fine. Points leagues, yep, cool, hold on to them and just wait and see what happens. But there's a real risk that I think Russell Westbrook's value is completely kaput. So um, just wanted to get my thoughts out there with that one. But again, I know a lot of you are big fans of Russell Westbrook. And I, I loved him earlier in his career and he's a very exciting player. But just strictly from a fancy basketball point of view, I am preparing myself for his value to be pretty much in the toilet pretty soon, but we will see. Um, and in the last trade, which was a minor trade considering all the other deals, uh, Cam Reddish, and I think was it a first round pick or a second round, or at least a pick being moved over to Portland in exchange for Josh Hart. I think that this is a, 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 a dint in Josh Hart's value. I personally see a um, timeshare of sorts between he, Quickly, and Grimes. Some people are saying that maybe they're going to move a Randall over to center and, and he's going to play big. I think that would be disastrous for their defense um, when you've got Randall as your center, Brunson as your starting point guard. Uh, I just that's a, that's a really, really poor defensive lineup. It might happen. Um, I'm not ruling it out, but I think for all three of those guys, quickly Grimes and Hart, it's a slight hit to their value. Um, just because I think the minutes are going to be a bit more of a crunch. A guy like um, Reddish, who wasn't playing at all, if they are, and they, they gave up a pick to get uh, Josh Hart in there, that means that he's definitely going to be part of their rotation, and any addition to something that wasn't there before is going to hurt those guys, in my opinion. So um, I think that they're the guys that are going to lose out the most. Um, I don't know if I would say I'd drop them straight away, but a player like Grimes, I, I would be if there's some of those must add players on there that we spoke about before available, and he is your worst player. I think by all means you can go ahead and cut him and make a move. Um, so. Yeah, I think that will cover us today, guys. Uh, sorry about the rambling of this podcast. It's, um, again, wrapping my brain around it. Stay tuned to more things on Twitter. Again, Ball Boys Fantasy on Twitter. I'm going to be tweeting out my initial thoughts on there as fast as I can. The trade deadline is at like 4 in the morning for me tomorrow, so uh, I might miss those first couple of early ones, but I will be up very early. I'm getting up at 4.30 in the morning or or, or whatever the case may be um, to, to have a look and sort of get my thoughts out on Twitter. I will have a post-trade deadline deadline show later on that night after I finish work and I will get that out as quickly as I can but wanted to get this podcast out to you guys so uh, you can make your moves now and um, yeah all the best guys so let me know if you have any further questions in the comments and uh, who do you think if you think I've left anyone off chances are I probably have because I've had five minutes of preparation for this podcast but let me know if you have any questions down in below give this video a big thumbs up if you appreciate uh, the speediness of this podcast coming out and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.